African countries are finding it difficult to access COVID-19 vaccines. By most projections, Africa will not have sufficient access before 2023 at the earliest. This could affect the continent's post-pandemic recovery. Already there are talks of a digital vaccine passport, which, if implemented, may severely restrict the ability of unvaccinated Africans to travel. So what is causing difficulties for African countries to access COVID-19 vaccines? To begin with, there are insufficient global supplies. The continent needs 1.5 billion doses to vaccinate 60% of the population. At least 36 countries have placed or are planning to place orders for vaccines. And the African Union has secured 970 million doses. However, there is a shortfall of more than 500 million doses and deliveries have only just begun. A second problem is the cost of these vaccines. The 1.5 billion doses needed will cost about $9 billion for procurement and delivery. Each vaccine costs about $3 to $10 per shot. Many countries simply cannot afford this because their government finances have been squeezed by the impacts of the pandemic. These challenges are further exacerbated by great power rivalries. On one hand, there is vaccine nationalism among wealthy countries. According to the UN Secretary General, 75% of all vaccinations so far have been in just 10 countries. Wealthy countries like Canada, those in the EU, the UK and the US have bought up more than three to five times the vaccine needs of their populations. On the other hand, rising powers like China, Russia and India have stepped in to meet the supply gap of COVID-19 vaccines for developing countries in what has been called vaccine diplomacy. With all these challenges, what can be done to expand vaccine access for developing countries? COVAX, the multilateral initiative, is a good starting point, but it is simply insufficient as it will cover only 20% of the population in any given country. African countries should therefore continue trying to secure supplementary deals with individual manufacturers. However, they need to work and negotiate collectively. The African Union should also coordinate member states towards strategies that will allow them realistically coexist with COVID-19 in the near term while limiting infections and deaths before vaccines become widely available in the medium term. For wealthy countries, it is commendable that through the G7, they have committed to sharing a portion of their vaccines and are providing new funding to COVAX. Beyond these charitable donations, however, wealthy countries should stop blocking proposals at the World Trade Organization to allow for mass production of COVID-19 vaccines and treatments necessary to save billions of lives. Big pharmaceutical companies should also get on board through the World Health Organization's COVID-19 Technology Access Pool Initiative. The pharmaceutical companies can voluntarily enter into licensing agreements with companies in Bangladesh, South Africa, India, Egypt, and other parts of the world to scale up production.